Saving and investment, we have established the importance of producing goods and services because it provides us a better standard of living. And the government, what can the government do? So if the society can change the capital they had, no? so invest in current resources, in capital instead of consuming, no? uh, instead of consuming the capital so you invest okay you invest in current resources what will it lead to diba? so you can accumulate no capital accumulation but uh, we're also facing trade off no more capital um, less resources to produce goods and services and consume less and save more so with this the government can encourage better standard of living because resources are scarce devoting more resources to producing capital requires devoting fewer resources to producing goods and services for current consumption so diba? yun lang yun okay so for society to invest more in capital and consume less and save more of its current income the government can okay encourage better standard of living they can influence the amount of saving and investment that takes place encouraging saving and investment okay in which the government can encourage growth okay and provide better standard of living diminishing returns and the catch-up effect so suppose the government encourage more savings no to raise the nation's saving rate so what will happen no the nation saves more meaning if the nation save more less resources are needed to make consumption of goods no? goods and services so less resources are needed okay to produce goods and services so if less ang kailangan to produce goods and services Okay, you accumulate more capital. No? You accumulate um, more capital, the capital stock increases. So, if our capital stock increases, okay, it will rise productivity. Okay? And if nagtaas ang productivity, more growth in GDP. So, as the capital stock Prices, extra output produced from an additional unit of capital falls. Okay? Or, and that is called um, the diminishing returns. So, okay. If the workers already have a large quantity of capital to produce goods and services, meaning an additional unit of capital increases their productivity, okay, but only slightly. Okay, so let's have a figure to illustrate this, okay, the production function. So this figure shows how the amount of, comp of capital can influence the amount of output per worker. But take note, this is um, with relation to diminishing return, no? Diminishing return, let's define it. Okay, the property whereby the benefit from an extra unit of an, out, of an input declines as the quantity of input increases. Okay? Diminishing. Okay. So in this illustration, um, other determinants like the human capital, no, the natural resources and technology are held constant. Okay? And the curve becomes flatter as the amount of capital increases because of, of course, the diminishing return to capital. As you can see in the figure, here we have, when the economy has a low level of capital, an extra unit of capital leads to a large increase in output. What does this mean? Okay, so let's illustrate this through an, an example. Let's say, okay, um, you're a business statistic student no you have your statistical um, you have your statistics okay and as a student what are your what is the low level of um, 
educational tools that you'll be needing, di ba? Uh, we have pen. Of course, you need you needing your pen. You need your paper. You need your notebook. Okay? Then, you bought a calculator. Ka ng patindahan lang na calculator to help you with school. To you help you with statistics. And then, here comes an extra unit of capital. You added Though this, what you have now, adds to your productivity as a student, but um, yun lang, you limited. Let's say you added an extra unit of capital, okay? You added a scientific calculator, okay? The scientific calculator, you'll be able to compute for mean, for standard deviation, na hindi na manumano, okay? So it adds to your productivity. There's a large increase, okay, in productivity, okay? But, okay, look at the figure again. When the economy has a high level of capital, an extra unit of capital leads to a small increase in output. So, ngayon, uh, meron ka ng scientific calculator, okay? Uh, ngayon, nag-upgrade ka, Okay? What you have is yung ano lang um, duma pa na scientific calculator, but it does is its work. Ngayon nag upgrade ka, okay? Ano na yung ano bang kaibahan ngayon ng mga scientific calculator, di ba? So although nag upgrade ka, okay, you're already productive. You do you're computing for your statistics well. You're in your statistics. Um, Activities while well, you're doing it well because you have your current scientific calculator, you, then you upgraded. Okay? And with this upgrade, no, small increase lang ang, ano, ang dumagdag sa iyong productivity. Okay? Um, so ito, okay, the, the principle of diminishing return. As you become more productive, okay, when the economy now has a high, high level of capital. This extra unit, okay, itong extra na unit of capital only leads to small increase in output. So, ganun lang yun. Okay? So, what does this all mean? No? Though higher saving rate leads to higher level of productivity and income, but not higher growth in these variables. Okay, so uh, because of diminishing returns, so an increase in the saving rate leads to higher growth, okay? Higher growth, but only for a while, okay? Higher saving rate allows more capital to accumulate from the benefits of an additional capital, and so the growth slows down. So meaning in the long run, higher saving rate leads to higher level of productivity and income, but not higher growth not higher growth but okay according to studies uh, on economic growth increasing down the saving rate we're familiar with the saving rate it can lead to substantially higher growth for a period of several decades so matagal tagal pa matagal tagal ang effect and it's higher for other country to grow fast if it starts out re relatively poor the effect of initial condition of subsequent growth is called the catch-up effect. In four countries, okay, workers lack even the most basic school. So that's why, as a result, they have lower productivity. So small amount of capital investment would, diba? would raise the workers' productivity. But in rich countries, large amount of capital and um, large amount of capital, large amount of productivity, it has relatively small effect on growth of its productivity. So let's define catch-up effect. It is the property whereby the countries that start off poor tend to grow more rapidly than countries that start off rich. Okay? So let's have an example. United States and South Korea. Okay? So they devoted their similar share of GDP to investment. Yet over time, United States 
um, experienced slight growth, no? While South Korea, look at South Korea now, they have massive growth of 6%. Okay, that explains the catch-up effect. Okay, in 1960, um, maliit lang yung um, GDP per person ng South Korea, okay, compared to U.S. Okay, but because of um, increase, okay, because of initial capital stock that benefit to capital accumulation, it has greatly contributed to the growth of South Korea, which gives them a higher growth rate. Let's proceed with investment from abroad. So we have established that increasing the country saving rate can increase to investment and then leads to um, economic growth and it and when we're talking about long term so let's discuss investment by the foreigners so it takes in many forms okay like the ford motor company they can build a car factory in mexico so a capital investment that is owned and operated by foreign entity is called a foreign direct investment so how does this happen no we're familiar with corporation here in the philippines foreigners can allow to own businesses through corporation which compose of 60 percent filipino and 40 percent foreigner it can happen and an investment and an investment that is financed with foreign money but operated by domestic resident okay, is called the foreign portfolio investment. So in other words, like the case of Ford Motors, the American okay, owner of Ford, okay, they are American, they um, provide the resources to increase the stock capital in Mexico. They finance Mexican investment. So when foreigners invest in other countries, of course, um, they expect higher return on their investment. So when foreigners invest in country, okay, of course, they expect return on their investment. So look at the case. If the American, the Ford car owners, uh, increase the Mexican capital stock, okay, therefore, Okay, it follows that they in, will increase the Mexican productivity and Mexican GDP. Diba? But recall GDP. Diba? What is GDP? It is the income earned within a country by both residents and non-residents. Okay? So let's look at GNP. Ang GNP, it is the income earned by residents of a country both at home and abroad. So when, so when Ford opened its car factory in Mexico, ang income ng factory may um, contribute to the people who do not live in Mexico, okay, mga foreign investment. And as a result, so foreign investment raises the income of Mexican measured by the GNP by less than it raises the production in Mexico. So, measured by GDP, it's because of the foreign investment. Okay, so foreigner ang maka-benefit. Though you may raise the income of Mexican, pero ang production, hindi masyado. Production for Mexico. So, I hope it's clear. But, nonetheless, no, investment from the foreigner is one way okay, to grow for a country to grow even though some of the benefits from this investment flow back to the foreign owners but this investment does increase the economy's stock of capital leading to higher productivity and higher wages so investment from abroad is one way for poor countries also to learn state-of-the-art technologies that is developed by richer countries. Ganun lang naman, di ba? Exchange of knowledge. One way to learn state-of-the-art technologies. So, organization like World Bank. These are the organization which encourage flow of capital to poor countries. They obtain 
funds from the world's advanced countries like United States and use these resources to loan to less developed countries so that they can invest in roads, sewer systems, school, and other types of capital. So the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund has this common goal, uh, similar costs. Education, so investment in human capital. So it's as important as investing in physical capital for any countries no? when we talk about long-run economic growth. In the United States, each year of schooling improved around 10% total income. In less developed countries, okay, where human capital is scarce, the gap between the wages of educated and uneducated workers is even larger. Importante talaga ang education. Okay, China invested in their education. Look at their country now. So one way the government policy can improve the standard of living is to provide good schools and to encourage the population to take advantage of them. But investment of human capital has an opportunity cost. So when students are in school, they forgo the wages they could have earned to be members of the labor force. In less developed countries, Okay, many children often drop out of school to um, to work, no, to support their family. Okay, maybe the reason why our country, no, uh, hindi masyadong marami ang nag-take ng master's degree, post-grad study, it, it's because we need to support our family. So, some economists have argued that um, human capital is as important for economic growth, some economists have argued, and I agree, you know, that um, investment on education could base positive externalities. What do we mean? Externality, let's define it first. It's the effect of one person's action on the well-being of a bystander. So, itong mga educated na mga tao, educated person, might generate new ideas on how to produce goods and services. Okay? One thing that I really appreciate now that I'm in my doctorate studies, no, um, more on bukbuk talaga kami sa research, and these research, no, might help organization to improve productivities. Okay, so um, some would say that education kills success. Okay, meron nagsabi sa akin sa akin, no? may nagadvise sa akin, no? but um, as I Pero matigas ang ulo ko eh. As I've gone through my master's to my doctorate studies, I really appreciate these investments for self-growth. No? It's because hindi lang para sa amin. Okay? We can contribute by generating new ideas. Okay? We can contribute to society. Another problem, I think we're also experiencing this in our country, what we call as the brain drain. The immigration of many of the most highly educated workers to rich countries. I know, because they were looking for greener pastures. Our nurses, our doctors, no? they're working abroad to have better quality of life, to enjoy a higher standard of living. Let's proceed to health and nutrition. Of course, if you have healthier workers, you have a more productive country. The right investment in the health of a population provide one way for a nation to increase productivity and raise the living standard. So even the economist, you know, Roger Fogel, okay, he said that the significant factor in the long economic growth is the improved health from better nutrition. Because he said in Great Britain in 1780, um, one in five people are malnourished that they can't even do manual labor but those who can work insufficient naman ang caloric intake kasi mahirap nga eh di ba? so but as the nutrition improve the productivity of great between okay increases because the workers productivity also increase even during the 1775 to 1995 increasing the caloric intake by 26 percent um it made the average British man grew taller okay, at around 
3.6 inches. Okay, average of 3.6 inches. So in South Korea, during 1962 to 1965, okay, when caloric consumption rose by 44%, there is an increase no, of um, height by 2 inches by South Koreans. Okay, so nations developing economically, okay, people get taller. That's no question why ngayon meron na tayong um, basketball player will be soon, no? hopefully, will be representing us in the NBA because, okay, though maliliit, we're used to Filipinos being a small, no? maliliit na mga, na maliit na population, but as our economy progresses, okay, it made people get taller okay, because of good nutrition. But of course, a person's height is determined by a combination of genetic predisposition and environment. Okay? But um, the genetic makeup of a population is slow to change. That's why an increase in average height are more likely, most likely due to the changes in the environment. Okay? Nutrition being the most obvious explanation. So, malnutrition is where in developed nation, diba? like United States and UK. Okay? But um, people in developing nation, what they're experiencing is the problem on obesity. Okay? Still, still okay? a problem of poor health. The causal link between health and wealth runs in both directions. So, health and wealth is a bidirectional relationship. So, Poor countries are poor because their population are not healthy. Their population are not healthy because they are poor and cannot afford adequate health care and nutrition. So, it's a cycle. No? It's a vicious circle. But policies that lead to more rapid economic growth would naturally improve health outcomes. In turn, promote economic growth. Let's now proceed to property rights and political stability. Another way policymaker can foster economic growth is by protecting property rights and promoting political stability. Okay? Production arises from interaction of firms and individuals. Okay? For example, when you buy an iPhone, you know, when you buy an iPhone, okay, you are buying from let's say apple but not just apple parts that make up an iphone the chips the camera all those parts you are buying from them so there is coordination in between these firms okay not just the firms and consumers market economies achieve this coordination through market prices market prices are the instrument with which the invisible hand of the marketplace brings supply and demand into balance in each of many thousands of markets that make up the economy. Another important prerequisite for the price system to work is the respect for property rights. Sending property rights. Okay, it refers to the ability of people to exercise authority over the resources they own, such as the mining company that may... Um, that will not make the effort to mine iron ore if it expects that the ore to be stolen. So, bakit pa? Bakit pa kami magmamining kung um, we'll be expecting that our, um, the iron ore will be stolen? So, the company mines the ore only if it is confident that it will benefit for monetary gain. So, for this reason, courts serve an important role in market economy. Okay? They enforce property rights. And through the criminal justice system, the courts discourage stealing, no? theft. In addition, through the civil justice system, the courts ensures that the buyer and seller live up to their contracts. In many countries, the system of justice does not uh, such as contracts are hard to enforce, okay? Maraming cases of stealing, theft, which is, which goes unpun unpunished, okay? And in more extreme cases, the government 
not only fail to enforce property rights but actually infringes upon them. In some countries, firms are expected to bribe government officials. Mm-hmm. Di na lang tag kaiguan eh. Such corruption impedes the coordinating power of markets and it also discourages domestic saving and investment from abroad. So one threat to property rights is political instability. Okay? Sige, revolt. Ano mga, 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 sige, hmm, di na lang mention Okay, there is no doubt that whether property rights will be respected in the future. So, kaning mga revolutionary government, okay, might, might steal, might confiscate capital of some businesses, okay, um, but from the resident, of course, okay, so it discourages foreign investment, okay, so foreigners has less incentive to invest in the country because of these threats, okay, so recall from the Marawi incident, di ba? Uh, maraming natatakot when we declared uh, when we declared martial law maraming foreign investment ang nag back up because of the declaration of martial law so economic prosperity depends partly on political prosperity a country with efficient court system honest government officials and a stable constitution will really enjoy higher economic standard of living than a country with poor court system, corrupt official, and frequent revolutions. Yun. Yun ang problema natin. 